Support WrestleTalk! Order a t-shirt. After nearly a full year of teasers on social media, Matt Hardy was finally given the creative freedom by WWE to have the ultimate deletion match on Monday Night Raw this past week. Not only was this the first time WWE held a match at the Hardy compound, it was the main event of Raw. You could say it was history making. <laughs> I can't wait for the first ever women's ultimate deletion match next year. Oh, Brian Zane already made that joke. You hiring him would be a mistake. For those who didn't watch our short review of the match from Tuesday, I thought the match was broadly fine. It didn't make me laugh and it didn't pop me, but I didn't hate it or think it was stupid like Michael Cole did. <sighs> We'll come on to that later. Ollie, on the other hand, was far more praising of it. In fact, I had suggested on the Monday before the match that we do a review of it, but he wasn't sure it would be worthwhile. But after watching the match, it was all he wanted to talk about. And that's what makes Ultimate Deletion and Matt Hardy's unique and bizarre brand of entertainment so intriguing to talk about. It's so different from the pro wrestling norm, it's bound to split opinions. Wrestling Memes, for example, approaches it from a comedy perspective. Ollie Davis, with his degree in film studies and screen practice, looked ultimate deletion as a piece of cinema, looking at the way wrestlers acted and conveyed character without the use of dialogue. I not only think that's fascinating, it's great for pro wrestling. New WrestleTalk recruit Kenny McIntosh had similar thoughts to Ollie, spreading his love for the match over Twitter the following day. So Kenny, tell us why you loved Ultimate Deletion. What did I think of the Ultimate Deletion? There's only really one thing that can describe how I felt about it. Charming. It was great. <laughs> You had Matt Hardy finally getting to do his broken stuff on Raw for WWE. Vince McMahon gave them the main event of Raw and they knocked it out of the park. We had the introduction of Queen Rebecca, King Maxwell, Senior Benjamin, Wolfgang. We saw the dilapidated boat Scarsgar. We got to go around the Hardy compound. But the key thing is, not just the fans who used to see an impact, we got Bray Wyatt's old burned down shack house reformed to mess with his mind. I thought it was a great part of the, 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 the match. We also had things like the dilapidated city, the dome of deletion. It was a great, great spectacle throughout. Um, I'll never stop laughing at the idea of Matt Hardy at one mile per hour threatening to run Bray Wyatt over the lawnmower. It was insane. A cameo from Brother Nero. What more could you want? And at the end, Bray Wyatt was deleted. I want to call out though one of the criticizers of this match. Dave Meltzer, bit of a grump lately. He was saying that he didn't like it because he preferred it in Impact, but there was a cast of thousands. There was never a cast of thousands. There was like 10. But then again, this is the guy that once said there'd be a WWE pay-per-view called Intermission. What about you, Brian Zane of Wrestling With Regrets? What did you think of the match, if you can even call it a match? Well, Luke, I definitely enjoyed watching the Ultimate Deletion. Like you said, it wasn't really much of a match in the traditional sense, but it was certainly a spectacle. There was certainly a story being told. That's really all you can ask for. No matter how you tell the story, the story is there. And hey, there's a ring too, so you can't beat that. The only thing I would say about the Ultimate Deletion was you really can't enjoy it as much. Like, first of all, it's not as good as the final deletion, uh, but it also is is better for you to enjoy it if you've seen the other stuff on Impact. If you don't, have, if you have no knowledge of the Impact Wrestling stuff, then you have no idea what's going on with the Ultimate Deletion. But if you do have that context, it is more enjoyable because all of the tropes and the fan service is there. Like all art, Ultimate Deletion was incredibly subjective. There were those like Corey Graves who thought it was all sorts of awesome, and others like Michael Cole who felt the need to apologize for what we were about to watch. Again, we'll come on to that later on. In the comments on our Wrestle Ramble review, it was at least 64 positive to negative. I mentioned on Wrestle Ramble that Ultimate Deletion was an acquired taste. I'm a big fan of the band Primus, but their eclectic style and Les Claypool's odd voice could put people off listening to them. While I would, and often do, sit happily and listen to their album covering music from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory that sounds like this, Others would want me to shut the stereo off and never play that nonsense again. In many ways, The Ultimate Deletion is pro wrestling's version of Tommy Wiseau's The Room. Much like the split of opinion you might get with Primus, there will be people, my wife is one of them, who can't stand to watch The Room because it's too bad. Whereas there are those who revel in just how bad a movie The Room is. The thing with The Room, and the same with the equally brilliantly awful Troll 2, is that the filmmakers were trying to make the best film they possibly could. But bad writing, unforgivable acting, and poor storytelling make them objectively bad. However, like the ultimate deletion, they have an audience. The Prince Charles Cinema here in London holds monthly screenings of The Room, which are often sold out, usually with Tommy there to do a Q&A. Hell, The Room has such a 
following that a feature film was made about it based off Greg Sestero's tell-all book The Disaster Artist. And Best Worst Movie, a documentary on Troll 2, is one of the finest docs I have ever seen. Like The Ultimate Deletion, they are fascinating to talk about. But on a deeper level, Ultimate Deletion should be celebrated because it's a product of one man's mind. Matt. Hardy. This whole universe wasn't created by the WWE booking team or their infinite arm of monkeys and typewriters. This is Matt's project, and that shows in the final product. It shows that Matt and Bray care about their characters and giving them some natural and logical progression. Bray's reaction to seeing his compound in Visions is genuine and heartfelt. It's the most interesting he's been as a character in quite some time, and that's the result of him working on something for himself. The most interesting story right now in the world of professional wrestling is the split in Bullet Club, and that's because both ROH and New Japan allowed Kenny Omega, Cody, the Young Bucks, and everyone else to work on the story themselves. They've then taken that story across various promotions and various shows, and even used social media like no other wrestlers have. Perhaps it's too much to ask for WWE in 2018, but giving wrestlers a little bit of creativity in their own storylines and characters could create a really positive output. But that isn't really helped when you have someone like Michael Cole introducing it by saying, I have to apologize for what you're about to watch. Right, I'll say this as politely as possible. F you, Michael Cole. So was Ultimate Deletion a success? Well, that depends on your point of view. If you're looking at it in terms of ratings, then probably not. The third hour of Raw dropped 11% week on week, which is quite a significant number. Even with all the teasers, it didn't keep viewers interested enough to stick around and watch it. However, the third hour was above 3 million viewers, which doesn't happen often. But for me, the Ultimate Deletion is more about than just the ratings. It's about what this match means for WWE and their talent. As far as your question, was it a success? It depends on who you consider it to be a success for. It was clearly a success for Matt Hardy. Let's not take anything away from him because he basically had this creation in Impact Wrestling. Impact ran with it, then he went to WWE, then WWE took it and did the exact same thing and not really doing much to change it and make it their own thing. That was pretty much Matt's baby and it was almost the same from one place to the other. The fact that WWE blatantly copied this thing that Impact had already done so shamelessly and knowing that we knew that they were ripping it off and not caring about it, that is the biggest thing to me. That shows how powerful this movement was by Matt Hardy. So in summary, Wrestle Talk, what did I think the ultimate deletion? Let me get my associate Winston Churchill in here to tell me. Winston, Winston, what did you think of the ultimate deletion? Delightful, yes. So, as some of you might be wondering, if I'm so positive about Ultimate Deletion here, why did I say it was broadly fine earlier in this video and in the Tuesday Wrestle Ramble review? Although, going by your comments, you'd think I'd called it the second coming of the Ultimate Warrior vs Hulk Hogan from Halloween Havoc 1998. In the end, it comes down to personal taste. Ultimate Deletion is pro wrestling Marmite. I've been to screenings of The Room and Troll 2 and had a blast, but Ultimate Deletion did little for me. I love the wacky and oddball world of Les Claypool and Primus, but Broken Matt Hardy gets on my tip a bit. Having said all that, I do think Ultimate Deletion was a huge success. We have other wrestling based opinion pieces here on WrestleTalk, so click the videos on screen right now for more awesome wrestling content.